Hello and welcome back to the Welsh Premiership podcast and uh, episode 35 today. And uh, we're joined by a man that's uh, been around in the Prem for a few seasons now. Uh, point scorer, a uh, really good point scorer at Cardiff and now he's moved up, up the valley to Merthyr. Uh, Gareth, uh, how are you doing? I know you're missing uh, this weekend's trip because you've got COVID, but uh, hope you're not feeling too bad and uh, yeah, you're recovering. Yeah, all good. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me on. Um, appreciate you asking me to come on. Uh, as you said, yeah, uh, missing this week because of COVID. So I think I've dodged a bullet there with the trip up to RGC. Um, but hopefully we'll be back uh, in training next week. Uh, yeah, so to start off with, you had a spell with the Blues Academy. Uh, what was your time like there? And uh, what were some of the players you played with like? Um, yeah, so I came, I went to, I suppose, you'd say the standard route. Uh, did all the 16s, 18s, that type of stuff. Um, did Wales 18s. Um, so I kind of, I guess I was never really part of an academy contract. Um, so despite playing 16s and 18s, um, there's a few guys like Rich Pat- Reese Patchland here above and things like that. So um, I don't think there's any, they felt there was too much of a need to sign me at that time as someone like him um, in the academy. Um, so I did 16s, 18s, that type of stuff. Really enjoyed the process. Um, I know it's quite a similar thing now where you get get to play at a high level against all the other boys, similar age group, um, so to test yourself up against those types of guys. Um, my age, there hasn't been too many, I suppose. Um, it, it's probably one of the few years which hasn't had that many go up to the next level. Um, but once you're in type of the 18s and that, I suppose you're with guys that in the year above you, so people like Alex Jenkins, Corey Allen, those types of guys were, were in and around the same circles as me. Um, so, yeah, quite an enjoyable experience to be amongst players like that. Yeah, and you went up to Hartbury College, you know, to continue your studies and stuff. Obviously, you played rugby for a few seasons there. What's some of your best memories from playing up there? Um, yeah, as you said, I did go up to Hartbury. So I think when it came to the end of the 18s process, like I said, I wasn't offered that uh, full-time contract. Um, so I kind of then had to think about what, what was next, I suppose. So um, education is obviously something that you kind of then try and fall back upon. So I made the decision to go up there. I hadn't spoken to quite a lot of people who'd been up there and experienced it. And I can only say good things about the place, to be honest, um, just in terms of the whole setup there. It's very professional in terms of the environment, the facilities they've got there, first class. Um, so you can see why a lot of a lot of uh, people do tend to make that trip up to there, um, whether that be to, to in search for pro contract or with the education. Um, but yeah, had lots of good experiences up there and played quite a bit for the university side. And then obviously they've got the Saturday side going as well. Um, but I'd have to say, Probably the highlight would have been winning the Bucks Trophy. Um, I think it was probably my third year. I think I did four in the end. Um, went, went part-time because I was taking too long to do the degree. So, yeah, I think in my third year, uh, we won the Bucks Trophy at uh, Twickenham, um, which was a great experience, really, to play with a lot of your mates who you're living with and things like that. Uh, so, yeah, it was a really good experience. And how did you find the difference from playing in the Bucks League to playing in the, the English League with the club side? Um, I suppose it was a bit different. Um, I suppose Hartbury is quite unique in that. Was they, even though it was a university, we did have uh, quite a few adults playing for us, quite a few men who'd come, whether that they were working at the college or coming on loan from places like Gloucester. Uh, we did have quite a lot of senior players, so it was different in terms of the physicality. That was really my first experience of men's rugby, I suppose. Um, so where you come from, the Bucks would probably, I don't want to say a little bit more skill, but probably more. Uh, focused on quick type of play, throwing the ball around, whereas it was more set piece or orientated in the men's type of league. But as students, we uh, we try to avoid that as much as possible, I suppose. Yeah, and I did see you played a lot of fallback as well for the club side. What did you make of that? Would you rather play a ten or? Um, I, I think it, I don't think it was out of choice to be honest. There's a few good times at my time up there. Um, Billy Burns, who's doing really well at Ulster at the minute, and uh, has got capped by Ireland, was kind of. Uh, floating around at that time when he was a youngster coming out on loan from Gloucester. Um, so it kind of happened there, just as you go up to uni, I was one of the younger ones, so there's probably more established people there in, in my position. Um, so it's kind of just give myself a, a chance to play somewhere and get on the field, I suppose. But I did enjoy it, uh, probably a little bit more suited to 10, but something I'd like to think I can do if called upon, I suppose. Yeah, and Gareth, you, you briefly touched on uh, that you had the um, honour to represent your country at under 18s level. Uh, how good was it to represent your country? And I know you had a little trip out to Madrid as well, didn't you? Uh, playing with some like, so like Nicky Smith and Hallam Amos. So how good was that? 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, I missed out on 16, which is a youngster. You're probably quite hung up on, quite disappointed. So um, I got called up quite late into the 18 squad. I missed kind of the build up to it. And then there's a few injuries. And luckily, so I kind of got my way in that way. Um, but just to be in, involved in an, in an environment like that, um, going to a big tournament, um, I think it's called the FIBA stuff out in Madrid, where it's two or three weeks out there in like a big professional environment. And like you said, um, some of the boys within the Wales 18 squad, Hallam Amos, Nicky, Nicky Thomas, Nicky Smith, people like that. Um, some really big names that have gone on and done very well. Uh, and, and quite soon after that tournament, actually, uh, playing professional rugby. So, yeah, it's a really good experience myself. And uh, your first taste of Premiership rugby then came with Cardiff. Uh, how would you assess your time with the club? Um, yeah, so when I'd finished uni, it was kind of uh, thinking about what I wanted to do next. Um, came back to do with work to like work with the WIU and the hub officer role. So it was kind of um, I'd had a little taste of with Cardiff before I went to university. I did a preseason um, before I went, so I kind of knew it was going to be the club I came home to. So um, I knew Adam Ross at the time, who was from the same village as me in Penturk, so I kind of had that contact with him, um, and, I, and I knew it was that was going to be the team I came home and played for. And yeah, for my first few seasons, it well, for the whole time I've been there, really. Um, I can't say much more than, than really really enjoyed it. Um, first couple of years were probably slightly more difficult than, than the last couple. We probably weren't quite as successful as we wanted to. Um, probably a number of reasons for that. Um, but yeah, on, on a whole, really enjoyed uh, the, the time at the club. Yeah, and you won the Welsh Cup as well in 2019 at Cardiff, defeating your current club, Merthyr, and I think you scored 10 points in that game as well. What was that like? Yeah, again, it was to play at such big stadiums like that. I mentioned earlier at Twickenham, and then obviously, I think it was my first experience to play at the Millennium. Um, I'd never done it as a youngster, so obviously, it's a big occasion um, to play somewhere like that. So, yeah, I think we'd had a really good season that year. Um, started to build a bit of momentum towards the end of the year. We weren't quite in it with the league, we're a little bit off, but I suppose on our day, we felt as though if we'd we put a performance together, we could beat anyone. And, I think we needed to in those types of years. I think Merthyr were really strong around that type of year. That's when they were kind of winning everything, I suppose. Um, so, yeah, we, we we played really well that day. It was a 50-50 game. It could have gone both ways, I suppose. Yeah, and then obviously your last season at, at Cardiff then. Um, I don't think anyone would argue that Cardiff were well on their way to winning that league title. Uh, how happy was we, were you with the performance of the team and your own personal performance? And then how disappointed are you that um, obviously the seal the season then got curtailed because of injury and you didn't really get the chance to to get that league title? Yeah, like you said, it, it was disappointing in the end, but I think throughout that year, we probably did show we were, I think you'd say we were probably the best team in that league. Um, I think we had a really good coaching set up that year with people like TRT Thomas, Gethin Jenkins, and just brought a real professional edge to us. We, I think sometimes you can have a problem with Cardiff where you, you don't perhaps get the selection uh, consistency. Um, I think we found that in our first couple of years, definitely my first couple of years there. But I think they seemed to get the balance quite right that year, uh, where we obviously were helped up by people coming down from the Blues and things like that, which you do need because there's some really good players who can come down. But we had a good, good core squad of players, I suppose, who were in the spine of that team who were playing fairly regularly and then supplemented by some of those good boys coming down and helping us out. And I think, yeah, we, like I said, we just got the balance right. And yeah, we, we clicked that year. We'd, we, we were quite consistent, didn't lose too many. And as you said, we were in a, a very good position to hopefully go on and win the league and potentially do the double with a cup. But uh, it wasn't to be, I suppose. And obviously you've moved on from Cardiff now and have joined Merthyr. Uh, how did that move come about? Um, so I, I think, like you like we mentioned, obviously COVID cut that season short. Um, I think, if I'm being honest, with it, there's probably some implications maybe financially with Cardiff because of that. Um, whether I think I was in the position to potentially sign before the pandemic to stay at Cardiff. Um, and then when, when the pandemic hits, I think they kind of put a bit of a freeze on their budget and said that we're not in a position to offer, offer you guys things at the minute. Um, and they were quite open and honest about that, to be fair. They just said, we, we, we don't know, so we can't really offer anything. Um, so from there, I had a couple of pe people speak to me. And to be honest, as soon as um, I spoke to, I think it was Gavin Dacey and Chief at, at Merthyr, um, I kind of thought, you know, well, something I'd be interested in going and doing. I haven't seen the success they've had over the last few years. I think it was definitely something that interested me. 
Yeah, and how are you enjoying it there now? You know, you've had a decent cup running, sealed your spot in the quarterfinal and a good start to the league already this season. Yeah, I think it's it's been it's been different, probably from being uh, maybe one of the regular boys coming from Cardiff, you're more one of the senior type of people to then go into a new environment. Um, it's been quite quite enjoyable, but quite challenging at times as well. Just getting used to different players, different coaching styles, that type of stuff. Um, so it's been it's been a good experience for myself. Um, I think so far this year we've probably been, if we were honest, we've been quite inconsistent. Um, one week we've, we'll have a really good victory and then we've had some disappointing wins against Newport and things like that where we just haven't really given the best account of ourselves if we're being honest. Um, so, uh, like you said, we're starting to now have probably show a bit more consistency, starting to get through more combinations together and things like that. So I think from our point of view, we're going in the right direction. Um, so hopefully we can carry that on this weekend with a win. Yeah, and you're missing the trip up to RGC as well this weekend. Do you confident the boys can do the job up there? Yeah, I think so. Like, um, I think the, the break's done us good. I think maybe before the break, we'd have liked to continue because we, we were getting a bit of form. Um, but I think the break's probably allowed us to have a good few weeks of training together and also um, probably strengthen the squad in terms of injuries. We had quite a few injuries during that first part of the season. Um, so to get a few, a few of those boys back has been a real boost. Um, so I think we lost up there. We beat them at home. So I think... Uh, we probably didn't give a great account of ourselves last time out there. So I think uh, Chief will have gotten to the boys this week in training. And I think we'll definitely be going up there to try and get the win and keep it three in a row, really. Yeah, I just wanted to to touch on the Chief. And you mentioned that he was a, a big part in your move to Merthyr. Obviously a great character, well-known around Welsh rugby. Just what is he like um, as a coach and what is he like as a person as well and to, just to be around? Yeah, good, good, great, croak, great bloke. I mean, I I had experience with him before when I was coming through. So Blues 18s and Wales 18s, he, he coached me those type of years. Um, so as soon as I knew that they were interested in me getting up, I I, I knew what I was in for. Really, I don't think um, he's anyone to hide what he expects of players. Um, he expects you to give, give your all, put, put your body in line, that type of stuff. Um, he obviously has his elements to to the tactical side of the game as well, but I think. What he expects most most from you is, is for you to go up there and fight for the jersey and fight for each other. Um, and I, that when when boys buy into that, like they have done in the past, um, you can see the success it has. Um, so I think as a new group come together, I think we're just starting to get that now. Um, but yeah, it's been a really enjoyable experience with him so far. Um, and the other coaches as well have been great. And uh, you've played in the Premiership for a few years now. Uh, what are your thoughts on the standard of rugby in the league? Um, from a personal point of view, I think a, a good level. I think you you always see on Twitter that type of stuff in the in the press where maybe the Premiership doesn't get um, as much recognition as maybe it deserves. Um, I think there's always going to be the conflict conflict sorry between the the A type of leagues or maybe where the Premiership. But if I'm honest, I think when when it does get the respect it deserves, the boys coming down uh, put put their effort in that type of stuff, they get the benefits from it. Uh, I think probably a good indicator for that was maybe some of the boys dropping down for the Blues over the last couple of weeks, or Cardiff, sorry, um, where not coming from full-time environments and then being thrust into a huge European fixture against some of the best players in the world um, and giving a good account of themselves with, with a week or two's practice. Um, so I think, yeah, it, it, is, it is a good level. I think it, that probably needs to be bought into uh, from everyone. And I think once that product is then... Is then there without it probably being played with every year or two in terms of the format and number of teams. I think if they decide on what's going to work and stick to it, um, I think you get a good product. And uh, who is your toughest opponent in the league to come up against? I'd have to say Newport this year. Um, we lost. We had a, quite a close game against them the first time out um, in Newport, and then if, uh, if we're being honest, when they came up to the word this year, uh, they, they ran us ragged. To be fair, they were very well organised. Um, Couple of good good players there. Will read at ten, and then Matt O'Brien was uh, pulling the strings at twelve. So I think they've got a, a really good solid foundation to their pack this year, and then some some exciting backs to throw the ball around. So I think quite surprisingly, they're probably the one to watch this year. I think they proved that again with probably a good win against Van Dembry last week. Yeah, and you've played with some quality players as well in your prem career. You know, especially Cardiff. Who some of the best ones you say you played with, and maybe some of the best tens you faced as well. Um, oh, tough question. That um, I think some very good players have come down. I think in my 
probably my second or third year at Cardiff with Martin Roberts, scrum half for Cardiff. I know he probably he probably half this, but he probably wasn't the tail end of his career. Uh, probably didn't wasn't doing too many gym sessions. We were both KFC on the way home most weeks. Uh, but I think he, he still had a huge bit of class about him. I think he he wasn't the most physical at nines, but his passing was was unbelievable. I think for that year for me, I probably had my best season that year, just in terms of having him inside me. His experience, um, his skill level just really made a difference to my game. Um, and then I think at Prem level, like, there's there's a lot of good tens, um, good mates of people like Jack Maynard, that type, that type, uh, type of player, Steph Jones, um, who was at Cardiff again, really good type of player. Um, Ali Thomas at Abraham. Um, I know he's obviously played a little bit um, in Prem for a few in the Premiership uh, in England for a few years with Gloucester. Um, so to test yourselves against those types of guys, um, yeah, is it is it is an enjoyable thing. And as a club, you're through to the Premiership Cup quarter final. I was meant to be played a few weeks ago against Aberavon, was called off. Um, what are you expecting from that game? And it, um, has it been one of the club's aims to go on and win the cup this season? Was it something you targeted in pre-season? Yeah, I I don't think it was probably mentioned in pre-season. Um, and like I said, we probably had a bit of an indifferent start to the year. Um, I think probably after three or four games, we, we were looking, uh, not the best really, to make that top four. But I think that top four gave, gave a lot of teams a chance, despite not the best of starts. Um, but I think, yeah, every time you're in a competition, you, you're going out there to win it, um, especially with the history of Merthyr. Um, so it'll definitely be a tough game because next Sunday now against Aberab and um, I think they had, a, they had a fairly good start to their year. I'm not, I'm not sure if they first. I think they're first or second, weren't they? In there, in that side of the, the league, um, they're a well-drilled team. I think they've kept quite a co- good core group of players over the last few years, um, and have added a couple again this year. So um, they're definitely going to be a tough task, but something uh, we're definitely are looking forward to, and, and, and are confident we can go and win. Really, I just wanted to touch on as well. Um... Moving back to some of the players you played with, and obviously you mentioned some of the boys that um, played up for Cardiff in Europe as well. Obviously, the twenties are playing tonight, and there's a, there's a few um, Cardiff boys involved with them, isn't there? Alex Mann, the, the skipper, uh, Cam Winner as well. So how uh, like how glad are you to like see them being able to represent the twenties now on uh, tonight? Yeah, I think like we said, it was. Well, when you've got this argument with the Prem, I think when those boys are coming down, I think it's obviously going to be a good advert for the Prem. Um, quite a lot of these kind of boys, especially in the backs, have been playing quite regularly and throwing the ball around, scoring some good tries. So I think they're promoting the Premiership in turn and then it's, it's then another good chance for those, those guys to go and showcase their skills. Probably a different type of stage, um, TV, that type of stuff, international games. So um, I think there's a, there's a lot of good players playing, playing in this league at the minute. A lot of youngsters as well, like you said. So they'll they'll be keen to go and showcase what they've got in an international fixture. And I think the, the Premiership's given them a good foundation. They're, play, they're playing regularly, which is great for those guys. And rather than having one or two fixtures every th- every three months, so they'll be match ready and ready to yeah go and hopefully get the victory. Yeah, and to finish, we've got a teammates quiz for you. Okay. So, go. <laughs> firstly, who's the worst dress teammate you played with? Oh. Well, I'm gonna, to, I'm gonna go uh, Peter Lloyd at Cardiff. I don't know if he listens to this, but yeah. Some, What's some uh, of the worst things you've seen? Some, bags, some baggy jeans there, baggy jeans and running, running trainers. Beat the meat. <laughs> and uh, the best drink that you've seen? I don't know if there's many. There wasn't many good drinkers in my time, to be fair. <laughs> um, Evan Yardley, Alex Everett, they don't mind a good swig, to be fair to them. I think uh, Yardley will chuck it back. And your favourite changing room DJ? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to stick with this year. Ben Jones is on the on the tunes at Merthyr, so I'll uh, I'll give him a bit of credit. But I'm not too sure the boys be keen that. <laughs> what sort of tunes is uh, Ben Jones? Oh, on? it's a bit mixed to be honest. The I beat the classics dance. Uh, he, he thinks he thinks he gets the boys going. I'm not too sure. <laughs> and uh, without revealing too much to us, who's the biggest liability you've seen on night out? So I'd have to go mush Morgan Allen. Morgan Allen, 100%. Big bloke, but yeah, can't drink. He's a liability before you chuck alcohol in him, surely. Yeah, I know. So yeah, not a yeah, bit of a dodgy character. Uh, <laughs> and if you were stuck on a desert island, who's the teammate you most want to be with and one you least like to be with? I tell you, I'll, I'll stick with the same for least. I'll go 
Morgan Allen, <laughs> least one view them, and I'll, I'll uh, James Beal and Cardiff, a good mate, so kept, uh, kept very good close to him, good mate of him, so I'll go with James Beal, just nice bloke, nice bloke. All right, that's a wrap then for this episode. Cheers for joining us, Gareth. No problem at all, guys. Thank you for having me. Uh, no worries. Uh, hope you're recovering well from COVID and obviously best of luck uh, to Mirtha uh, tomorrow and uh, best of luck for when you're back on the field, hopefully uh, next week then. Uh, thanks to those of you that are watching as well and uh, check our social medias at Wash Prem Pod and we'll be back with another guest episode and another weekly preview again soon. Thank you and goodbye.